um, represent the teachings of Christ concerning the kingdom of God. And um, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, if Jesus tells you, uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he said, all these other things that you desire uh, shall be added unto you. And uh, so he's prioritizing what we should prioritize. And we should prioritize uh, God's kingdom because we live and abide in a kingdom that is represented of God. A kingdom that represents a domain, a domain of God. And um, the current kingdom that we're in, the Bible tells us it's without observation. You can't see it. But, it, but it's in you. And the reason why it's in you is because uh, God's principles, God's word dwells within you. So if the word of God and his principles are in you, uh, and you have his spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, then the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is within you. And uh, the reason why I say that is because Based on that information, that tells us how we ought to conduct ourselves, how we ought to live. And it is not a suggestion for kingdom citizens to live according to God's holy commands, uh, but as, as I last stated, it is a command of God of how we ought to conduct ourselves as kingdom citizens. Um, so as we move to Matthew, Chapter number seven, Matthew chapter number seven, and we want to can finish and complete our study of Matthew five, six, and seven, um, and and move on to the next <laughs> the next teaching of the Lord. And, you know, God is good. Uh, he always He always prepares you for the next. <laughs> thank you, Lord. And we thank God that there is a next. Uh, so, Matthew chapter number 7, and I want to begin reading at <coughs> verse number 1. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 1, it says, Judge not that ye be not judged. Judge not that ye be not judged. And this, this judgment that he's talking about, um, obviously the saints of God, uh, we judge certain things, and um, uh, we, we even judge uh, one another at, at the appropriate time. But what Jesus is after here is dealing with our relationship uh, one to another. Jesus himself made a profound statement. He said, I come not to, uh, to, to judge or to condemn, not what I came to say. And that's his primary purpose, is to save. And our primary purpose is uh, to help to save one another. We, our, we are our brother's keeper. And um, uh, we don't work in conjunction with the enemy. I have no heaven in hell. You have no heaven in hell. Uh, and God himself is the final judge. So what, 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 what Jesus is after is, is that uh, we don't judge other people's motives. We don't judge their motives. We don't judge the heart. And uh, it is God that judges the heart. He looks upon the motive. And, and there's some reasons why uh, we don't judge people to look down upon them or be on others. And uh, we should not hold negative opinions uh, 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 against our brothers or our sisters uh, because that breeds uh, a root of bitterness that can really spring up, the Bible says, and may be defiled. So what he's after here is, is if you hold a negative thought against your brother or your sister, then you're going to eventually have some negative uh, behaviors toward your brother or your sister. And, and so 
we, we don't judge one another as far as uh, uh, looking on their actions or condemning their deeds and things such as that. Um, uh, that's what Jesus is after. So he says, judge not that you need not judge. And once again, I said this, I'm going to say it again, that, that we do judge situations. We do judge conditions. You know, whether or not I should get involved uh, or whether or not uh, that individual uh, is doing something wrong, uh, we, can, we are allowed to judge that. Uh, but what he's after is looking uh, down on someone and, and judging their intent, judging their motives. There's, there's two words that we should look at here. Uh, uh, judgment and discernment. Judgment and discernment. And, and what he's after here, when we think of judgment, is literally pronouncing a sentence upon someone. And we are not in a position to, uh, uh, I'm talking about in general, in general, pro uh, pronouncing sentences upon people. Now, uh, people in leadership, they, they uh, uh, especially in the church, to help with church discipline, uh, uh, God gives them authority to pronounce judgment upon a situation or a condition uh, that, that involves a person. But in general, this is what the scripture is talking about here, it's in general, we don't, we don't, uh, absent from being in leadership, uh, we don't uh, uh, judge one another to pronounce a sentence upon them. And that, that gave you two words, judgment, I know, I know I'm, I'm probably talking a whole bunch here, but I'm trying to explain my position. <laughs> y'all have me out. Y'all say, hey, guys, you confused me right here. But, but when, when we talk about discernment, then, uh, discernment, judgment is pronouncing a sentence. Discernment is looking for the truth, looking for the truth of a matter. And we should always seek to look for the truth of a matter. All right? And I, I always like to that to this. When there's an accident, when there's an accident, uh, generally two people show up, uh, uh, the police and the ambulance. You know, they show up. And, and the police are looking for primarily who's at fault. Uh, who, who has the issue here? Who's at fault? Uh, when the ambulance show up, they ain't really looking at who is at fault, but they're looking at how can I help? Uh, 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 what, what can we do to heal? What can we do to make this situation better? Uh, and and they, that's what we should be doing when we interact with our brother or our sister, to, to look towards making the situation better. Amen? So, so we see here that Jesus says, Judge not, we have Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 1, and Jesus says, Judge not, that, that ye be not judged. So he says, For with judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye sh it shall be measured again to you. In other words, uh, uh, when you harbor a negative thought, or negative in, intent and motive against an individual, uh, that's going to come back around to you. That's going to come back to you. And then, uh, uh, when you notice, when you harbor a negative thought to an individual, it's going to cause you to react in a negative way toward that individual. <coughs> you can have hatred in your heart and it not be expressed. You can have love in your heart and it not be expressed. Whatever in your heart is going to be expressed. So he's saying that if you then uh, 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 have negative uh, thoughts on an individual and you act negatively toward them, rest assured, he's saying, that, that, that negativity is going to come back around to you. Whatsoever man saw it, that shall he also be. It's better to allow God to be the judge and allow, allow, allow God to pronounce
pronounce the sentence upon an individual. Amen? Amen. So we see here, verse number three. It says, he says, uh, and what? Behold, beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, and consider not the beam <laughs> that is in thy own eye. And Jesus, he's a, he's a powerful teacher, and he's given us a, a visual illustration of what he really means. So he's saying, what? Uh, behold, he's looking at the moat. And that word moat literally means the speck. It means the speck uh, that is in your eye. And, and behold, the, and that, uh, uh, consider not the beam. And that, and that, that beam is really a plank uh, uh, that they use as a, as for, for building uh, rooms and as a rock. The plank, you know, you got a plank in your eye, and yet you're all you're 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 you're, you're looking at others uh, to to uh, uh, and the, the little things that they do, but you're really not considering the big things that you do. Uh, that's what Jesus is saying. He said. Why do you hold this now the moat, the little things that is in thy brother's eye? No, but consider not the beam that is in your own eye. You know, uh, the first judgment that we should do is what Paul said, let a man examine himself uh, to see whether or not he's walking in the truth. We should always examine ourselves, our own motives. All right? And, and what I like about this verse is, is I like the, uh, Jesus. Remember when Jesus told Peter, he said, Simon Peter, uh, the devil uh, or Satan has desired to sift thee as wheat. Uh, and he said, when I pray for you, uh, that, that your faith will not fail. And then at the end of that, he said, when thou art converted, uh, strengthen thy brother. And that's what this sentence, uh, this, this thing, take out that beam out of your own eye, uh, and so you can see the moat that is in your somebody else's eye. You know, when you have made a conversion, when you have made a change, then strengthen the one that is weak. Strengthen your brother. Strengthen your brother or your sister. Amen? So, so it's all about uh, uh, us getting ourselves together so that we can help somebody else, so that we can pour into somebody else. We should always look for uh, self-transformation so that we can help somebody else. Be good and fit for the kingdom. Notice here, he says, Why beholdest thou the loaf that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the being that is in your own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the loaf that is in thy eye, and behold, the beam is in your own eye. Meaning, you can't help anybody uh, if you don't, uh, are not in the right position uh, to help yourself. Even, even when you're going into a dangerous situation, they tell you before you enter into a dangerous situation, you know, uh, have, uh, make sure your own safety is secure. You know, because if, if, if somebody was drowning uh, and, and I jump in that water and try to save them and I can't swim, we both go drown. You know, so, so I got to make sure I, uh, I, I, I'm in a good position. Uh, I'm, in a, I'm in a good place to help somebody. Because if you're not, you know, you can help from uh, somebody that's bitter. You can help somebody that, and I, I'm using that word getting help in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, kind of condescending way. Because you don't really get help from people that's bitter, uh, from people that's angry, you know, people that uh, uh, have a negative perspective on life. But what are they going to do? They're going to pour that into you uh, to cause you to have a negative perspective on life. Uh, so, so that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, get yourself in the right position uh, before you can help somebody else. <laughs> hey, look, get saved if you're going to help somebody get saved. Uh, save yourself in the community. All right? So he says, uh, notice then, uh, verse number five. He says, thou hypocrite. We 
He said, uh, uh, thou hypocrite first. <laughs> Jesus did by himself. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thou hypocrite. <laughs> thou hypocrite first cast out the beam uh, out of your own eye uh, that thou mayest see it clearly to cast out the moat or the speck that is out of thy brother's eye. So when you keep yourself together, don't leave your brother hanging, your sister hanging. Amen? Help them. Amen? Why? Because we are helpers one to another. Are we supposed to bear one another's burdens? Yeah. Absolutely. We're supposed to bear one another's burdens. You know, uh, 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 people uh, uh, in a family unit, we, we get on each other's nerves. Uh, uh, people in a family, they get on each other's nerves. Uh, they, you get, you, they work that bear. Amen. But, but you know, uh, 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 some rational thoughts kick in. That love kicks in. Covers multitude of fault and sin. You know? And you know, uh, that's what should kick in in the body of Christ. That love should kick in. Even though we may get on one another's nerves, uh, uh, we sit in the same boat, trying to uh, uh, serve the same God to, to, to meet the same destination. Uh, the beauty of this is, is what I'm trying to get you to see, is God has put in each of us gifts that we need uh, to help uh, make the journey. Uh, I, I'm not fooling myself. I need everybody's gift that's in this house uh, to help me make my journey. Uh, and, and, and so forth and so on. We need everyone's gift uh, and in the house to help make the journey. And, you know, even, even those that, that, that are walking in a seat by way, uh, thank you, Lord. God is putting them gifts uh, that, that are irrevocable. Uh, 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 the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, meaning that they're irrevocable. They may not be operating in the, the fullness of walking with God, but they, their, their gift, if they decide to use it, can be effectual. Uh, it, can, it can make a difference. In our life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm teaching up in here. Amen. If you receive the teaching, if this is mature teaching right now. Uh, because even, even a drunk person can tell you about Jesus if, if, if they're telling you really about Jesus. Uh, and if you receive it, you can be saved and then be lost. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, some people got gifts. Got to put mess up. Everybody has gifts. Amen. That, that, that can be utilized to build up the body of Christ. You notice, he gives the gift and it comes without repentance. Meaning that they can operate in that gift even though they don't fully repent and walk with God. Huh? Hallelujah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, sir. Bishop, I was just thinking a lot of times uh, we don't understand one another. Right. We don't understand one another, but because we don't understand one another, doesn't mean that we should be at odds with one another. We Absolutely. should show the love of God yes. towards one another. And God will straighten out whatever it needs to be straightened out. Right. But, you know, the Bible says, don't judge another man's servant. Right. And sure. so if we are God's servants, then yes. God will do that judgment. Yeah. And, but what the devil wants is for us to keep having division among the people. Yeah. And as long as he has us divided, then we can't prevail. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and that prevailing means that God can't show his mighty hand in the midst of us. Mm -hmm. In the midst of us. And that scripture that you quoted, not judging another man's servant, it's literally meaning don't condemn uh, God's servant. Uh, we can't condemn one another. Amen? And 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 that's that's the way of God. Amen? I can't condemn you, you can't condemn me. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, this is good stuff here. This is good stuff. Notice, notice. Um, uh, verse number six. And he says here, see, this is this is beautiful uh, uh, in the sense that that that, that I put 
to me out there, you know, and I hope it doesn't choke you. You know what I mean? And that's what this verse is about. This verse 6 here is Jesus is suddenly saying to them, you know, what I'm saying to you about judgment, don't let it choke you. Amen? Receive what I'm saying. So he says, uh, give not that which is holy unto dogs. Uh, and, and he says, neither cast your pearls uh, before the swine, lest they uh, trample them, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and make you. So, so dogs and pigs were, were fully despised by the Jews. They hated dogs, uh, and they, they hated pigs, right? So, so what is he saying here? And when he says, don't cast your pearls uh, before the swine, he was literally uh, 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 saying in, a, in an opposite way, in an opposite way, that receive this truth, or you will be considered a dog or a swine. Uh, that's what he said. Receive the truth that I'm giving you. Uh, don't reject it, uh, or or you'll be a swine or no. Uh, that's what he said. Uh, Jesus is awesome uh, in his teaching. Uh, so 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 he's 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 really cutting the proteins on uh, those that that are bucking up against the word of God. No. Uh, 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 first. Uh, let's go there real quick. Hallelujah. First Corinthians uh, chapter 14 and verse 37. We have to say amen. Alright, he says, if any man think himself to be a pop. <laughs> or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are what? Commandments the of commandments of the Lord. So, so when Jesus is, is teaching here, he said, let, if you think yourself spiritual, then acknowledge huh, but what I have said unto you. Very, very what I have said unto you. Uh, if you. If you are a uh, prophet, and acknowledge that then the word of God. Don't bump up against it. Don't resist it. Receive it. Don't be a dog. Don't be a swine. Uh, and Jesus used those words intentionally. Uh, if I, if I, if I want it on camera, I say something. You know how we can use some words that 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 we really cut to the quick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that will really cut you quick and, and, and really offend you uh, to make you think. Uh, some, some words, you know, some people can call you a name, uh, but, but, but if they call you that certain name, 
the things uh, uh, that the things I write unto you are are the commandments of the Lord. Huh? Thank you, Lord. If you didn't have the ignorant, <laughs> let them be ignorant. <laughs> All right. Uh, Matthew chapter number seven. Oh my God. I love this word. Look at this word. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter number seven. And verse number six. He said, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your furrows before the swine, least they trample them under their feet and turn again and bend you. So, as I said earlier, Jesus is giving them this statement to make them think about themselves. Amen? We ought to think about ourselves. Huh? Thank you, Lord, that, that, that I can receive God's word uh, and, and, and walk in his word without rejecting it, making myself a dog or a swine. All right? So we see it in he further goes into more discourse about, about how we ought to, uh, 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 what will help us to receive the teachings of the Word of God. And now you need help in order to receive God's Word, to, to delve into it, to gain revelation of the Word of God. You know, you need help to mature and to grow uh, in the grace of God. And Jesus now, he's given us a formula to help us to grow uh, into the grace of God. Let me just say this. Uh, let me read the scripture. He said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find, not and it shall be opened unto you. We, when we are wrestling with the will of God, the, the, the first thing you should do is pray. Amen. Amen. Um, with that, I often think of this, this verse in, uh, in connection with Jacob. When Jacob had to go back and to face Esau, uh, something he didn't really want to do, but he knew that his divine connection uh, was back over there in his homeland. Uh, and, and he created the best for himself. Uh,
Yeah. Then you're not saying nothing of yourself. Nothing. Uh, you're not even fighting your battle. Yeah. You let God fight your battle. Yeah. And people might say things about you or do things, but you still be asking. Asking. You still be seeking. See? You still be knocking. Yeah. Or you see everything that uh, is out of my hands, yeah. it's in your hands. <laughs> you fight it for me. Yeah. And I've noticed a lot of times when you let God fight your battle. Yeah. You always come out on top. On top. Now, you just described uh, uh, the end result of, of what all this asking, seeking, and knocking will do. Because in the interim part, we're seeking, uh, 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 we're trying to do our will. We're trying to have our way. Uh, we're trying to interject our thoughts. You, you follow what I'm saying? Don't do that. Uh, 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 Lord, this ain't that.
saying in the Bible study is, this is given to you by God right here, that in order for you to know God, you got to know his word uh, and have his spirit. Uh, and that's what the scripture says, try the spirit by the spirit. Why? Because there's always an, an altered universe, <laughs> hallelujah, against no God. Amen? And, and the devil, he transfers, forms himself into a spirit, into an angel of light. Amen? So, so, so you got to try the spirit by the spirit. Huh? But the spirit that's speaking to you, huh? if, it, if it's not contained in the scriptures, huh? but, but thus said the Lord, it's not him. Huh? God never tell you to go smack somebody in the face. Cut somebody out. Uh, and then people blame out on God. Oh, what do you do? Uh, no, 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 no. Do stupid stuff. Uh, and say that's God. That ain't God. God will never tell you to quit your job. God will never tell you to sell your house and you become homeless. Uh, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, when you got a family to chill with. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, but some people think that that's God. Uh, now, now, granted, God will tell you to leave your country, leave your family, uh, go to a place where I'm going to show you. Uh, you might have a bad little life. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, but you can find that in the scripture. Uh, that's in the scripture. You follow me? Uh, they're not trying to be in the town. That's in the scripture. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, and you know, God says you're not always. Uh, but, but God will never tell you how funny it is. God will never tell you to do something evil to get ahead. Right. No. He'll never tell you. Amen. We ought to thank God that we can't. 
Amen. Amen. Why? Because we were born in sin. Huh? Shaped in the name. I want to live by uh, eat from eternity in a, in, a, in, a, in a sinful condition. So, so God has given us the ability to change. Huh? Uh, and that's where we get the words transformation. That's where we get the words conversion. Uh, from, right? Because we need an ability to change. And, and I thank God that I can change because I love Rachel. Huh? I'm reading and, and you know, if I still love Rachel, I'd be smoking. Huh? But because God changed my life. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Uh, I can leave Rachel alone. Yeah. I, I need to be with Rachel. Uh, come on here, somebody. Y'all <laughs> see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. No, 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 no.
Now, Jesus is saying, he said, notice, this is all about how to treat people. Amen? This, this whole seventh chapter here is about how to treat people, you know, in the body of Christ. Uh, uh, not to judge them. And to help us not to judge people, we consider ourselves the most that is in their eyes, but we're considering the being that is in our own eyes. Then he said, don't cast your pearls among the swine. Uh, he, uh, uh, barely, barely I say unto you, receive this word, or, or you'll be like a dog, or you'll be like a swine. Then he says, to help you to accept God's word, ask, seek, and knock. Now he's saying uh, uh, to help us to really uh, uh, grasp and bring home, he's saying uh, whatever you want people to do to you, you do to them. Right? <coughs> if you were guilty and, and uh, I can't say out of the way, when you want people talking about you, Spreading no business, being the topic of conversation. Yeah. Or would you want them to pray for you? Yeah. Huh? To help you. You see me, you see me uh, needing help. I know I don't want you to come help me. Yeah. Amen. And any person in my life. What do they like? So Jesus is saying that whatever you think, whatever you would do for yourself, do that for somebody else that is uh, uh, going through, that is out of the way, that is guilty. You follow? Treat them the way you want to be treated. And, 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 you know, he taught us, he taught us earlier. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall renew do what? Receive mercy. Now, I got the goods on you. Huh? I know you're guilty. <laughs> you know? And I can prove that you're guilty. Huh? So, so, what am I going to do with that information? Huh? What? Oh, yeah, we're talking. 
uh, what he's talking about here. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave. That's talked about in the prophets. The Ten Commandments, the first four, deal with our relationship with God. The last six deal with our relationship with one another. Uh, if you study the Ten Commandments, you'll find out what I'm telling you is true. It's all about relationship. Uh, follow peace with all men and holiness. That which is relationship. Without the witch, without that relationship, no man will see the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. So notice here. Alright? Verse 13. Enter ye again at the straight gate. Uh -huh. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Now, now he's talking about here, uh, when I talk about relationship, he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Now, the, the an entrance is an entrance way, it's an opening. Right? Now, look, he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. All right? And uh, he's also giving you a parable about a broad way. Now, the straight gate. The reason why it calls it straight is because uh, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of distractions with life. There's a lot of distractions uh, that can take you, uh, your eyes off of holiness and righteousness. But you've got to stay focused uh, in the true and narrow way. Uh, and not allow distractions to move you away from Christ. Uh, the way of holiness. Uh, that's why I said broad is the way. Uh, because uh, the, the broadness is a lot of distractions. Amen? Uh, there's a lot of distractions. You've got to fight uh, to keep yourself uh, away from all the distractions that, that even probably came up on you today. Uh, but that, that, that tempted you uh, to step out of a true and living life. Uh, but you gotta stay on the street. Uh, you gotta stay on the narrow way. Uh, avoid, avoid the distractions. Amen. Uh, that's all in the sermon. Uh, avoid this distraction. Uh, 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 uh. I like, I like what the Bible says. James, James is beautiful in it. He tells us, you know, resist the devil. Uh, step back. And he'll do what? He'll flee. And, and you know, you got to resist the devil. Huh? You got to resist. You got to fight in your life. You know, uh, if you got at least two, three, three years with Christ, you in the two, three, three years should have trained your mind to be automatic in fighting the devil. Shaking off the thoughts of the devil. Huh? Because evil comes to your heart on a regular basis. Uh, but because you're in the straight and narrow way, uh, you resist it. Uh, all right. Uh, it may fly out your mind, but you don't let it settle in. You rebuke it. Uh, am I right? Yes. I rebuke that guy. Uh, Stay back and keep rebuking him until he flees. Yes. Amen? And, and the worst thing you can do I know we teach about this often, is getting a conversation with the devil. Mm -hmm. Don't even get in a conversation with him. Uh, don't even try to defend yourself with the devil. Uh, because he's been around this thing longer than you. Uh, uh, and he knows every evil way, every evil trick. Right. Uh, so, so the best thing to do is to rebuke him uh, and keep on staying straight. Stay in the Our people would say. And, and that way is the way of holiness, the light. <laughs> the lifestyle of holiness. Amen? You got, you got, I like it when Paul, he talks about uh, 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 our, our life. And when he talks about our life in, in, in his epistles, he's talking about the environment. Uh, if holiness is in you, your the environment in which you live will be transformed into holiness. Y'all ready? Um, I know that's what I say. I clean my mouth. Uh, 
is home. Yeah. You won't buy no months. You won't buy uh, any extra cigarettes. Come on now. Extra. Why? 
Amen? Uh, beware of everybody speaks well of me. Uh, uh, beware of, of, of people that's always trying to give you something. Uh, get on your good side. Uh, watch out for that. Uh, every time they see you, they got, they got, they got uh, uh, 10 other words to describe you. Uh, uh, watch out for that. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, Make excuses. Y'all, y'all, why is it in 